Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode, that's correct, new episode of Wolford Weekly Podcast because we've got new EastEnders to talk about. New EastEnders? That's correct. Shrink wrapped and ready for delivery. It's been back for four whole episodes. Feels like it's been back forever. <laughs> it does, it really does. <laughs> like Monday's episode feels like months ago. Like mould on a fridge, mm. it just comes back. <laughs> you just don't, want, don't know what to do with it. So um, yes, we're back to chat about it. So these are the episodes that aired between the 7th and the 11th of September. Mm. And I am the host, Ben. And who are you? I'm the radio interviewee and co-host, Alex. Because I've been on lots of radio shows this past week. Yeah, the BBC are desperate. Because they're, they're trying to... They were trying <laughs> That's to... That's nice. <laughs> No, not desperate for you. No, but... no, desperate. So they had to choose me. No, no. Oh, okay. Um, they were trying to like pump up publicity because EastEnders is back. It's mm. been off for three months. People's habits Falling may have wandered. Yeah. So um, yeah, we were there. BBC, don't worry. Yeah, oh no, we kept we kept the train alive. We're the Stacey Dooleys of podcast. <laughs> we are. We're the Stacey Dooleys of, uh, <laughs> of local unpaid. radio. <laughs> unpaid local radio. <laughs> yeah, so we're doing the press trunkets everywhere. Mm. I, I, um, the most asked question for me was, are you happy that it's returning? No. I know, at one point I did feel like saying, no, actually, because it means work. Take that. <laughs> yeah. No, I am happy. We got through a whole week back, and I said when this went off, if the first week back has incidental music, I'll be quitting the show. You, you did, you made that threat. Yeah, and there was no incidental music. I know, I was so I'm still here. <laughs> I was looking forward to doing the show on my own. <laughs> I was going to get ghost, uh, go, guest present, ghost, I could get ghost presenters in, I could get mm, Pat, yeah. or Peggy, or Dennis. <laughs> um, I was going to get guest presenters in, one a week. I was mm. really looking forward to it, I had them all lined up, ready I'm to go. Here. I'm expecting incidental music next Friday which I predicted two weeks ago but we will see but if you can't happens. quit now because your threat was the first one. no I know I maybe know. the producers heard you <laughs> and they were like no we want... it out quick yeah we want our fix every week on a Sunday of Wolford Weekly Podcast <laughs> um, before we talk about the storylines just wanted to know what your feelings are to the filming techniques because we've seen them now how it's been filmed and the CGI mastery and mm. all that so what, how, how have you found it compared to Coronation Street sinkhole for example <laughs> Yes, uh, having watched, I, I'm not a, a continuous watcher of Coronation Street no. or Hollyoaks or anything like that. Um, I delve into it from time to time, and I decided to delve into their post-COVID episodes. Just to see what it looked like. It's basically. not post-COVID, is it? Yeah, but yes, it's, it's to see what they were like. Post-lockdown. Post-lockdown. Thank you. And I found them to be really strange. There, there seemed to be really long gaps between dialogue, and there was really unnatural gaps between. I know there had to be. There had to be two meters apart. Yeah, they so didn't hide like, it, did they? But they never hid it very well. He They've got the whole Panasonic set around a table. Well, that's right. That's right. All, all did their scene individually and then merged them in together in one big go. <laughs> I, I liked that they had uh, money floating between Chantel <laughs> and Karat's hand at funny. one point. Um, yeah. And I liked that they had, like when they tried to hide a pregnancy, they put like a bush or a wall in front of someone's stomach. No, oh, there's lots of walls and bushes now. There was lots of walls and bushes for Martin and Ruby holding hands. Yeah. So they kind of just had their hands outstretched toward each other, mm. but not actually touching. But at least they're making the effort. I thought it was really good. And actually, Actually, after the second episode, you kind of don't see it anymore. I I haven't anyway. And I mean, like the backgrounds yeah. look really busy. Like the market still looks busy and the mm. cafes, they're more empty, but it does look busy. And that's what the difference is between the other soaps, I think. But I found it a bit disjointed where they had a scene in the cafe, which is where it was most noticeable. Like in the Vic, there were people in the Vic and so there was an atmosphere of some sort. Mm. But in the cafe, especially between the Mick and Linda scene, <laughs> there was no other people in the cafe. But you could hear yeah, like knives and, and cutlery. And, yeah, and people eating and yeah, chatting, but there was no one there. There was no one there. So I thought that was a bit of a mistake. But mm. I, I mean, it's minor... I mean, audio's not there, um top point <laughs> which we'll talk about they should later. have had incidental music see they could no. have had Radio 1 playing in the background but I mean you said it I think that John Sen has directed as well and he popped on his directoral hat mm -hmm. when it came to learning the film techniques thank god for John Sen give John Sen his due no. he did an excellent job he really did do an excellent job at directing yes and, yes and producing and it was nice to see Kate Oates's influence yes, creeping in as well it was bleeding in let's be honest mm. you could see there was a Kate Oates influence mm. there, were, the there were characters walking past characters and switching to a scene yes that's Kate Oates mm. that is and everyone was mixing up together as well there wasn't just this is you this is you this is you which they were, which we said I think on the very last podcast of series one of EastEnders <laughs> and of Wolford Weekly Podcast yeah that it was, it was getting in danger again of becoming block storytelling mm. they were slowly going into that again and it was it was a worrying sign and direction but coming back it didn't seem to be going that way no. but I'm, I'm a bit saddened that unfortunately the improved and the improved stories the improved storytelling the improved film techniques hasn't really reflected very well on 
audience share? No, the audience is, I think they've lost just under a million, I think. Right. Maybe not quite that much. Maybe 800,000 they've lost, but <laughs> it's on a downward trend. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every but time... who cares? No, who cares? We love it. And we, we, we are that three and a half million strong that mm-hmm. watch the show. And I hope that three and a half million are listening to this right now. <laughs> Same. <laughs> we need the advertising. Yeah, advertise quick. And um, right, so we're going to go and talk about the week now. So we're going to start off with where it left off last a few months ago mm. with um, Sharon and Ian in the Vic. Yeah, Ian getting the Queen Vic bust out of the box. Again, oh, yeah. we mentioned this. We said, when are they going to get it? Are they going to get a brand new one? Are they going to get it out from the, the canal? They did the mm. latter. I don't know why it was part of the evidence locker. <laughs> like, <laughs> what's that got to do with any evidence? And how did they find it? Well, I suppose it could have been used as a weapon, maybe. Could have bashed mm. someone around the edge. I have prediction that that bust is going to land on Ian. Like, his little... Who did it? Uh, yeah, but they've done he, that already. Made, not a bus they haven't. Arch- oh, no. Uh, yeah, Archie. No, that was a snow globe. No, he was looking at a snow globe. It was a bit like Rosebud in oh, Citizen Kane. He was okay. looking at the Rosebud. At the Rosebud? He was looking at the snow uh, globe and he got hit by Stacey with the Queen Vic bust. Oh. So the Queen Vic bust has already been an accessory to murder. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, she was quite clean, though. There's no algae on her no. or anything. So she was, she doing was all there right. for that long, was she? She was down there for about, what, six months? <laughs> Bit of a spit clean. Yeah. Bit of a polish. She did her own makeup because yeah. of lockdown restrictions. Of her own so hair. she looks good. <laughs> Never seen her look better. Um, I must say, all the hair and makeup, like some of the characters look better doing their own. Oh. Kathy and Sharon. Get ready for hate. What? They do. They look good. Well, I, I, I think some of the production do listen to this, and her hair and makeup might be here now seething <laughs> at your comment. Well, they've been on the like. Professionals. <laughs> Well, all I'm saying is that Letitia Dean looks lovely, and yeah, so does Kathy. Letitia Dean literally wakes up in the morning. She gets out of bed and she's already prepared. <laughs> Cooking breakfast, as we saw. <laughs> yeah, in her best uh, Diamond earring. Yes, yes. The smell of bacon on her clothes <laughs> where she serves at the Queen Vic. That's what Ian wanted. All, all he wanted Sharon to wear to bed was her diamond earrings <laughs> and her Chanel number no. five. And, and the smell of bacon. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they've been, like, loved up. Well, Ian thought they were loved up yes. over lockdown. And Dottie decided to wind it up after Dottie got basically thrown out of the Vic for telling the truth to some extent. Mm, yeah, because she's had her court case, which like kind of hammered off screen. And like, it, it does feel like I've missed three months of EastEnders. It doesn't feel like I've mm. I've not missed an episode. It feels like I have missed a few months and I'm thinking, well, what's happening? Well, but, they threw you into it. Didn't yeah, they? They, they and they didn't really explain. To... No. Because Ian had decided to cover for Dottie in exchange for her being quiet off screen, I guess. Yeah, he dropped, I think he dropped his statement yeah. when they went to court and he said, oh no, I was, I was incorrect. I, mm. I think I misread the situation. But now um, that Dottie's got that, she was like, well, actually, I can't live with this guilt. Well, she got away with it. And, <laughs> you know, Ian, Ian, okay, he set it up so that she would get away with it with his help. So, mm. okay, admittedly, it was a very slimy move. But essentially, he did get her out of a lot of trouble. Mm. So potentially she's back at university, you know, all that. So can we talk about that weird scene where she compared Ian and Nick Cotter? <laughs> yeah, to, to Bobby, wasn't it? When she was yes. talking to Bobby on the bench, mm. on Dennis's bench. Mm-hmm. I didn't think they would keep Dennis's bench, by the way. I thought that was literally just a flash in the pan. I thought they'd be like, oh, yeah, there's Dennis's bench. Maybe Ian will get hit by that. <laughs> He'll fit his head on it. <laughs> Why does it have to be a blunt object that Ian gets hit with? I don't know. <laughs> Why not? But yeah, that was a weird scene because she said, she was talking to Bobby and she said, oh, my dad might have done a few bad things or murdered a few people, but all those people, he knew what they were, so they deserved it. Mm. And it's like, mm. Did they? Yeah, really, Dotty. Like, she's the one who went against Nick when he was trying to kill Dot the first time when she was a young girl. And she stopped it. Yeah. Although she was encouraging it to begin with. Mm. And then, but yeah, so you're right, she stopped it. You know, it. Reg Cox didn't deserve it. He was just an innocent he was offering drunk. Him, he was offering him a drink. Yeah. And he was like, no, I want your money. He smacked him around the head dead. Eddie Royal definitely didn't deserve it. Our Eddie. <laughs> I mean, no one liked Eddie Royal, no. let's be honest. <laughs> but he didn't deserve to die. No. His it's Irish like saying, girlfriend was very upset. She was very And his dad, his mm-hmm. Irish dad. Everyone in his family was Irish but him. <laughs> um, you, know, if, if, you know, if they killed Jags off at the hands of Dottie... He didn't deserve it. No. He d- he's a, but we he's a bit complain. of a. We wouldn't complain. But he doesn't deserve it. Um, Emma Summer Hayes didn't deserve it. She definitely didn't. That was an accident. It. She was about to reveal Bobby as the yeah. killer. Yeah. Or Kitchen. Jane as the killer. Well, yeah, she phoned Jane, mm. didn't she? And Spencer. No, not Spencer. Ashley Cotton. <laughs> Spencer, again, is another one that. <laughs> if he died, it wouldn't have mattered. He didn't deserve it. Um, and that was what? Nick's son? His son. His yeah. only So Dottie's. It, it's, no, he's not his only son, his second son. Yeah. So Dottie's like half brother died in the laundrette. Mm. Did he deserve it? No. Well, according to Dottie, his half brother did. <laughs> and the fact it still remains that Ian didn't actually cause Dennis's death. 
And Phil Mitchell's gotten off scot free for sinking a boat and endangering a hundred people. Yeah, but Ian is really going through the ringer for something which mm. he didn't really do. Mm. I mean, there's a lot of debate on that on our social media, and if people listen to the end, they can hear some of the comments they may have written. Mm. So there's a there's an incentive. <laughs> but I completely agree with you. I think that Ian is getting the brunt of all the blame for Boat Week, mm. and really, because, there's um, there's a lot of responsibility yeah. on a lot of other people's shoulders. Because he's even sat down. Because once Dotty told him Sharon didn't believe her, she chucked her out like mm. super. Superwoman, like they threw her out. She of was the threatening her with a with a glass bottle. Oh yeah, she where Dennis the glass... where Dennis died. Ah. Dennis Senior. Mm, symbolism. Mm. But they went upstairs and they talked, and he actually did tell Sharon like Bobby was being threatened. It was all down to Dennis. Yeah, I was doing it to teach him a lesson. You were giving birth, so you I couldn't phone you. <laughs> you were busy at the time. You were being held hostage by Ben with a gun. Um, <laughs> and they, he, he he's kind of told her everything. I think hasn't he? I think he's been as honest as he can yeah. be, really, without. So... I mean, he, the only thing is, is that he, I don't think he still hasn't admitted that he locked Dennis down in the bottom of the boat. I thought he did say that. No, he oh, just okay. said that he was angry at Dennis. But he did try to save him. But he did try to save him. And so Jan- he did risk his own life. Yeah. And Sharon f- kind of forgave him at that point and said, like, you know, I'm glad that you kind of kept a lot of the secret, a lot of things hidden from me because it kept the memory of Denny, mm. a, lo- a happy memory of Denny alive. But, you know, it's, I think this has made us stronger ever, even still. And now this then pushed Ian even further as an incentive to perhaps, ah, maybe there is something between us. Maybe we could like mm. flame yeah. and have a relationship. I hate this. Like, <laughs> they're, they're acting like Ian's always loved Sharon when really there was that few months in like 85 yeah. when he did. But that was like the first few months of a soap. You can't hold characters accountable <laughs> for what they are. And then 30 years later, like he hasn't always loved her, I don't no, think. But so it's a bit forced. I do. I, you say it's forced, but I think also that Sharon hit the nail on the head in the episode <laughs> where she said everyone knows that you give him half a smile and he's ordering a wedding cake <laughs> which is I'm um, already line of the series mm-hmm. and she the, said it to Kathy and she said it to Kathy as well and Kathy didn't debate it she was like she yeah. was like yes fair point, fair point. And, and he is isn't he remember he was doing it with Mel when she came back like, oh yeah I'm like, gonna marry her yeah exactly as <laughs> soon as she came back he was like yes I remember we had some we did have something in the early 2000s and I'm sure we can <laughs> rekindle it and so I suppose he thought the same way he thought well you know Sharon and I kind of has a we had a band together you know mm-hmm. we, we've had a lot of uh, stories together and you know perhaps we could rekindle maybe we could start something together he did try this a few months ago and she said oh, I do love you as a brother. Yes. So he should have remembered all these little things that Sharon has been like, no. But at the same time, he was giving her foot rubs. So Well, yeah, no, that was that was dodgy, wasn't it? I think it? Sharon when... was leading him a little bit. Yeah, when Sharon Ian, could you just uh, curl my hair, please? While we watch Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> I mean <laughs> I, I love that Sharon, first of all, hmm. binged on Grey's Anatomy while <laughs> while lockdown was happening. She almost saw Ian as her as her non gay gay best friend. That's right. Yeah. So, you know. Can we also, sorry to go off subject slightly, but it is mm. Sharon related. Can we yes. discuss her decoration of the upstairs of the Vic? Well, and the downstairs, because there's lots of um, promo pictures. <laughs> yeah, lots of photos of mm. basically her past yeah. everywhere. Because normally, like, there's a picture of Peggy, and that's like a little, like, Linda put it up mm. as a thank you about Peggy because she died. But I, that was the one thing that seemed for me to be out of place, because Sharon and Peggy were sworn enemies. They never really got on, and they mm. kind of appeased at the end, but there was never, you know, there was never a, a bridge built between I, them. The, yeah, there was, there was one final scene between Peggy and Sharon where they kind of, ex- she, Peggy kind of accepted, you can take my role sort of thing. <laughs> my um, cheese, my ham and pickle <laughs> roll. <laughs> Basic. Basic. <laughs> but yeah, I it would have been more believable to take it down, but I think out of respect because of what's happening to oh, Barbara course. Windsor, I of guess course. they couldn't. No. But there is a lot of photos. Rolling. Like almost a bit too many, I feel. <laughs> I love them. There's like eight on the bar, if not more than eight. <laughs> I love it. And there's like ones of like Den and Ange, but like they were they were never really that happy from when we when the show started but no. they've gone on these like photo shoots and like there's all these uh, do you know what I mean like there's, there's they're publicity too many. photos they that are, they're making yeah. out to be and there's one of photos. Ian and Sharon like socially distancing sat on a <laughs> sofa together <laughs> when they took that photo and it's like mm, I don't know like it's nice to have these moments but it mm. almost looks like like uh, an EastEnders museum <laughs> dedicated right. to 85 <laughs> i feel like it's there for basically the fans to kind of get all nostalgic mm. over it and have like a bit of a kick from it it's, it's mm. a short it's almost like i need kick. a ticket to go into the vic have a wander around one way system yeah. and out into the garden for a free drink i mean i would pay happily to visit the museum of the queen vic now quite honestly <laughs> and mm-hmm. and you know just for, as I, I mentioned just now the roly picture 
That Ron picture is my favourite thing ever. I know. That is actually, that is his cast photo as well that yeah. they've used. The cast they just, photo. They've just, they've just put it in a frame. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's nice that Rowley's being honoured. Mm. But um, Ian did tell Sharon. She said, "No, yes. I don't love you. I didn't mean to lead you on." And he kind of got a bit well. He was embarrassed. Bully, resent, resentment. He was embarrassed. I think he felt um, he felt mm. ashamed that he did go ahead and do it. Dotty called him out in front of the whole Vic as well and made fun yeah. of him about Max it. Max stood up for him. Max stood up for Ian. My best mate, Ian. <laughs> well, he, he said it throughout the week, didn't he? He said he has done good for me. Mm. He's my best friend now. <laughs> all Max was doing all week was just sitting somewhere reading a paper. <laughs> like that's all he was doing in different positions. They pretty much um, got what his plot should be from now on. Just have him sat in the mm. reading a paper. I, I can see that him and Dotty are going to team up because he was standing up for Ian. Yeah. Um, against Dotty. So him and Dottie are going to team up and make a plan. Um, but he seems to have moved back in with Kathy now, I guess, because he was sat on the sofa all upset. Yeah, mumpy. and um, she said, you know, no, none of your wives has ever known the real Ian. Um, Cindy was bad for you. Mel was bad for you. Laura was bad for you. Not that she ever met Laura, I don't think, but. Yeah, but she probably heard enough. Yeah, from Ian. Um, <laughs> but she didn't mention Jane. Yes. So is that because Kathy knows that Jane's the only one that really does know the real Ian, mm-hmm. or? Christmas return. Do they just not want to mention her to get people talking? Yeah, too excited because they yeah the first thing they'll say is because of the, three of three of his four wives dead. are dead. Yep. <laughs> so to mention them, there's no possibility technically. Mm. Wink, wink, Kathy of them coming back <laughs> from the dead. However, um, Jane is a possibility. So I think you're right. I think because if they had mentioned mm. Jane's name, everyone would straight away on social media go, "Oh my god, Jane's been mentioned." That means mm. Jane's coming back. But they're not mentioning her. It's like, well, why didn't you mention her? So it's a bit weird. Yeah, it's a strange one. But I guess also, she, Kathy was trying to give the point that none of those wives actually knew you, but we know that Jane did. So maybe mm. there was that thing. But yeah, he's a bit of a slime. He's, they're, they're turning into Ian Slimeball, like up to 11. Yes. Ready for a big storyline. So, mm. you know, it's all going to happen soon. It is. Well, it's, it's all building up to Ian's, e- uh, not end, gosh, it's, uh, his his departure from the show. Mm. Well, 10 week break, apparently. But it might be forever. When is they suddenly announced? I hope not. Well, do you think he No, I think he wouldn't. No, he loves the show too much. He looks trim as well, doesn't he? I know, when Dottie was like, huh, have you looked at yourself, Ian? It's like, Dottie, he's, never, he's not looked this good since no, he like, looks great. 1995. Yeah, he's lost his stomach, like, really well. Like, <laughs> he's tiny. Yeah, he's, he's nearly as tiny as Vinny, oh. but not quite. Little Vinny. We love little Vinny. Um, Right, so next up, we're moving on to the Carters. Because Linda is quite happy in lockdown. She's got a job. She's happy in her new flat. Their flat's quite nicely decorated. There's no disgusting wallpaper. Do we know where their flat is? Is it one of Jack's? It's one of Jack's, yeah. Oh, so it must... I don't know which one. Well, it must be the basement then. I think it's Cush's old one, isn't it? Well, that's not Jack's... Ah, no, that's not Jack's ownership. How do you know he hasn't bought it over lockdown? (laughs) Lots of people have been buying things over lockdown. (laughs) Didn't see Jack this week. Just realised that. You did right at the beginning. during. Oh, uh, that's right. When um, Callum the Copper (laughs) nicked someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yes. Um, But yeah, so they're happy in their flat. But Mick is kind of at a loose end because he hasn't found... Yeah, job and he's feeling a bit useless I guess he likes to be working mm. he's you know when he worked at the Vic it was a seven day a week pretty much a 24 hour <laughs> job because he was, it, if he wasn't working behind the bar serving drinks then someone was mm. holding someone hostage in the Vic exactly always busy yeah or some kind of heist but now he's looking for work but Tina was like oh you can come work with me yeah the gays will love you yeah manager of the uh, Albert you say the gays will love him there are not many gays in now but is there really <laughs> no. it's just Peter <laughs> <laughs> Peter Bill, who's the woman He's machine. He's a gay icon. <laughs> you know, I mean, fair he enough. He was in a calendar, topless, with Sonia. Gay so, icon. Yeah, yeah, that's true, with Dark Sonia, Cotton. Sonia would have been welcome in there, but Sonia's just too busy. I haven't seen Sonia yet, well, she's, I'm very she's upset. She's working in the hospital, she's probably sleeping there. <laughs> Bless her, she's helping the nation. Mm, so yeah, Mick, who obviously isn't um, gay that we know of yet. Um, <laughs> there's the two men who were... Chatting up a woman, a straight yes. woman in the bar. And upsetting her, yeah. Well, well, actually, we didn't know the woman was straight. She that's might have been true. gay, and that why she got a bit upset. That's true. But, it, yeah, it is like, all we need is Billy and Mitch back in there playing mm. air hockey, and it's um, the, yeah. the straight bar again. It might just be called the album. They <laughs> just drop the Prince part. <laughs> Let's call it the Dagma and just <laughs> yeah. get rid of it. Get rid of all rainbows. Don't Not welcome. Um, but Kathy, at the same time, wanted to hire Frankie, mm. where Tina wanted to hire Mick. Because Frankie helped Ben. And so she wanted to thank him oh, yeah. or her. Tina was like really off with it, wasn't she? Because she said, oh, I'm manager. I should be making these decisions. Well, they were having a bit of a quarrel, weren't they? Mm. In the corner of the bar, which was, again, really bad leadership really Typical for both Kathy. of them. She does treat her stuff like 
dirt. Absolute I've, dirt. I found out recently. Well, from from, from watching the classic episodes mm. where she's treating poor old um, Natalie. Natalie. He's like, Natalie, there's a table over there. <laughs> Natalie, that needs washing up. Well, she, well, she sits down and has a cup of tea. She did it to Mrs. Hewitt. Mm. She did it to that woman who was like in like 20 episodes. What was her name? Like Selena. <laughs> Do you remember her? She had like oh, pigtails. See, yeah, the character that never was. Yeah. Yeah, she's horrible to all her staff. So Tina should expect it. But um, Mick graciously gives the job to Frankie because yeah, they yeah. have a little chat and he kind of like sees something nice and warm about her so he's like no you can have it you're younger yeah you need it more than me I've got a million pounds from the Vic <laughs> I'm fine well you say that but Linda mentioned it this week that they're basically getting through the money I don't know how I don't know how either how have they spent so much money in such a short I suppose mm. if they bought the flat maybe that cost a bit of money maybe no because well, they're renting from Jack well we don't know they're renting from Jack no, we're just surmising but yeah Frankie's working there and then Tina is being quite like the things she was saying were quite awful was and for think... Tina it, yeah. it wasn't it didn't quite that wasn't Tina to me like Tina wouldn't say those things so it was a bit <laughs> Contrived. But she can be a bit childish, and when she's got a bee in her bonnet over something, she can be a bit mm, like of a stickler. Loose lipped. Yeah, <laughs> she can be a bit of a stickler and a bit of like, you know, Mick is her family. Brother slash uncle slash aunt slash dad <laughs> slash. <laughs> but um, Frankie thought they were in a relationship together, but when she heard that they weren't, mm. she was like, oh. But no, really, that Tina? surprised me too, because surely Frankie knew, because she went to the Vic before they sold yeah, it. Just because you go to a pub doesn't mean you know the ins and outs. Of the family tree. Surely you learn. If you're hovering around Albert Square, where everyone knows each other, <laughs> everyone is practically family. It's like a relationship on Albert Square is practically incest. Yeah, but Frankie might be playing a game because we know that she's got some big dark storyline. Yes. Like, well, I don't know if it's a dark storyline, just a big storyline where no one knows what it is. So you don't know what what's going on. Mm, she's photography. She's photography. She's taking photographs of Ollie. Mm, that was in the trailer, wasn't yeah. it? So um, yeah, but she seems to be just quite nice and. Tina was like, you shouldn't work in a pub. Like, you wouldn't be able to handle it here. And she chucks those two men out. Yeah, she shows she could handle it. She... Peter fancies her, so win-win. <sighs> Peter fancies anything that moves. <laughs> he's got a pulse. Take Peter my number. <laughs> really? The green giant. Well, he's got longer hair. He looks quite nice. He looks like Peter Bill. A lot Bill. of people have got longer hair. Yes. He does yeah. look like Peter Bill, actually. Mm. You're right there. But he yeah. More Peter Bill now. He's got longer hair. Um, but that's all there is with those two. Not really, they're just, they were kind of just mingling along during the week. They're building up the story between, and there's obviously a tension being deliberately built between Tina and Frankie Mm -hmm. for the purpose of that when, no doubt, Tina will discover something about Frankie, she will then go forward to Mick and Linda and say, oh my God, you you shouldn't trust Frankie, blah, blah, blah. They'll be like, don't be daft, Frankie's lovely. Mm. Kathy will butt in. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Saying she's the manager now. (laughs) Because that's another problem with Tina. Tina seems to discover something and no one seems to ever believe her. She's the the woman who cried wolf a few many times. Times, perhaps when she was younger mm. she hit old janet with a car so well can't yes. trust her <laughs> we've got of that is still to be <laughs> echoed through through time right so fast-paced storylines ruby Vinny, martin panasars mm. this like again felt like i've missed a, f- a few months worth of eastenders because it kind of came out of nowhere well there was like, a millionaire s ruby yeah. <laughs> Someone's bought five teddy bears. Now she's got no money. <laughs> Crystal encased teddy bears. Um, she's like running out of money. Her identity's been stolen. But the banks don't seem to be doing anything yeah, whatsoever. Like, they don't kind of believe her, but they do. But we... they're not doing anything. Yeah, it's really weird. I would have banks thought... are quite quick at doing it. Banks are incredibly quick for fraud, mm. and um, they would have closed the account immediately. That's not the biggest thing that's baffled Maybe me. Maybe they've got Callum Highway on the case, and it's just, <laughs> you know there's a quite a backlog with him <laughs> just going through CCTV footage. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Surely the bank account would have been closed the minute she noticed that one big purchase mm. that she hadn't done. That would have been it. Closed. Job done. <laughs> finished. Now she's got repo men at her door. Can't pay. They'll take it away. <laughs> they're, you know, they're going to they're going to take things away from her. She's not got enough money. Mm. And so in desperate times, she's... She won't she's tell just... Martin because she's too embarrassed because they've been living the high life. Yeah, but that's the that's the Sugar, state sugar baby. Soap. Well, that, that's another thing. Martin was accused by Kat this week that he was basically with... Her for the money. Just the money. And that as soon as Stacey came back, he'd drop her like a bad mm. egg. Cat's just jealous. I mean, that's mm. another random one. Like, Cat's just, she's there. <laughs> and like, she had one scene and that was it. Like, yeah, oh, but I thought that was important, actually. I found that her line was quite important, that she was there. And and you say, oh, you're, well, she's back. But they did, they did, you know, it was nice to see Cush and Cat together having mm. a drink. And it just in the felt Vic like, Gardens. In the Vic Gardens. Well, it's the Vic slash Cathy Gardens, isn't it? Mm. They Cath- share. They do. They, they. So I think it's for anyone who wants to just sit down outside and have a maybe Council, Councillor drink. Ian. He's got a share in the Vic. He's got a share in the calf. Yeah. He's got a share in the Dennis's bench. Eat so. out to help out. 
That's what they were doing. It did jump very quickly from Ruby having no money to like agreeing with Vinny to do an insurance fraud. <laughs> like yeah. literally in the space of two minutes. Well, it was Vinny's idea. Yeah. And she was like, yeah, it's all sorted. Just do it. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> I'm off yeah. for a shopping trip. Yeah. On, on, on a card that I'm <laughs> apparently not using. And it was like, oh, okay, this is, um, it feels a bit like, okay, this is rushed. And then mm. like the whole thing happened and he stole it and Martin saw and chased him and Vinny hit him around the back of the head with his fire extinguisher and it was like in the minute what is happening well. yeah and like they own the minute mark but they didn't really explain it yeah they kind of did the ownership of the minute mark and it's like what the hell is going on mm. so it's all a bit um happened very quickly on a tuesday yeah, yeah. evening where you had to literally try to keep up and <laughs> fill in the gaps yourself and what the hell like how did why do they own the minute mark mm. why is it closed jags and habiba randomly broke up in a scene out of nowhere and it was just like what's happening here? well yeah there's Kurt, also Crit and Suki were talking about money problems between them as well they've got money problems as well <laughs> yeah. I mean it seems to be a, a, a over overbearing arch of mm. the whole soap that everyone has money problems very well fed. which is very true we, we are all in a bit of a sticky situation oh, yeah. at the moment but watch our adverts and don't skip them please <laughs> yes. we need to pay the rent <laughs> please help us but um yeah I mean I, for me the Suki and Crit stories with the Panasars were what the strongest were you could see there was a real story developing between mm. them two you could see that their the crit is obviously suki's favorite that suki expects a lot from him as well she almost the... sees him like how she kind of sees her husband i guess that's she sees right. him that's right it sounds weird to say but she sees him as his her husband mm. but not like in a weird way but like no. as an authoritative way in like leading the family how he can run the family mm. where if she should you know die or she should go off that she expects crit <laughs> to be the one who guides them mm. um and i mean you could tell that when Vinny gets found out the first person he phones isn't Suki it's Jags <laughs> yeah of course it but, is but, 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 but Jags but Jags phoned Suki, Suki. So Suki phone Kurat <laughs> and Suki phone Kurat this is what I'm trying to say Kurat phones Ash <laughs> and Ash phones Vinny <laughs> And, but you can see the hierarchy within mm. the family, can't you? You can you see can. that the, you basically with that one continuous line of people <laughs> <laughs> passing on the blame to the other, you can see that there's, there's this hierarchy within the family mm. that one, I mean, Jags is, I think Jags is afraid of his mum, Suki, and Suki continuously berate, mm. berates him and puts him Belates down. Him and, yeah. Vinny, Can't believe you're my son. Yeah. How could I give birth to someone like you? Mm. Yeah, really um, quite horrible. And this is where Jags kind of decided to break away from the family and give him and Habiba another go because they've been Jabiba mm. or Hags, as we prefer to call them, <laughs> yeah. have been still carrying on. Secretly. But, and because it's been a secret, Habiba's not minded, but now it's come out in the open, mm. Habiba's got a bit more of a problem. Mm. And she saw him like collecting rent from all their multiple properties or whatever. And like they were in a bad way, but he demanded money and she kind of saw the bad side of the family. So she that's why she broke up with him. Not necessarily the family, just Jags, because she always thought Jags <laughs> was the soft one yes but Jags then put on his evil angry face <laughs> and uh, yeah this this wasn't really a side that Habiba was very happy with you know Habiba but, yeah. donates money to UNICEF every three month pound. three pounds three pounds <laughs> Jags doesn't no well he's got poker chip which has yeah. suddenly been brought into play <laughs> like out of nowhere again another bit of a kind of like this another have I in. missed three months of storyline here <laughs> Um, what poker chip what casino what happened yeah what life did you give up no one really knows Jags because um, there was a weird monologue because he was kind of against Suki lying to the police about Martin's attack and her, he was taking this like weird moral high ground like the family never used to do this I, no, I, I think can't do this it was but... the family do do that and that he's sick and tired of it now mm. he's had enough and I think I think he's he's realised his role within the family isn't he's going to be an equal to Corette or even Vinny mm. he's always going to be the one that's the runt and has to just yeah. kind of follow and chase the coat he always had that chip and he didn't cash it in at the right time no. he's, he's lost his chance of happiness <laughs> um, with Habiba I honestly thought when that weird monologue like a Jags monologue which I don't think we'd ever see but we did I thought are they gonna like is he this is exit <laughs> yeah I know it does feel like his exit doesn't it like he's gonna say to Bieber let's chip in and let's have happiness and they're just gonna both leave and that's it I mean contracts mm. contracts <laughs> I mean it, I would be sad to see Habiba go but if it means taking down the Panasar they're quite bloated already and if it means taking them down a bit I will sacrifice Habiba mm. for but a Jags this week was the first time where I actually found that the Panasars seem to have a purpose mm. there seemed to be a place for them mm. um, instead they've of... embedded them the story writers the producers they've put them they've embedded them so much in the show that actually it's almost difficult like to just get rid of them a bit like what they did with um the demarcos you know how they yeah. like, gave them restaurant gave them loads of brothers sisters families 
they they're a bit Demarco-y at the moment. <laughs> You're right, absolutely right. Actually, it's a good mm. comparison. The Demarcos kind of it, it took a lot of time for us to warm to them. Mm. Uh, but this week I did I've, I've, with Vinny. I'm sorry, Jax. Yeah. With Vinny Karat and Suki and Ash, I've yeah. really warmed to them, mm. and I, I'm I'm interested in their story. So when you said just now about him cashing in his chip and leaving. I'll be honest. I don't think that would be a huge hole in the flat in the in the sorry in the family dynamic. No, there, there's a lot of them, and mm. losing one or two of them, I think they would be beneficial. Ooh, and or it. two? Who's the two? Well, whoever. <laughs> <laughs> just, just knock them all out. Not Suki. She definitely not Suki. She um literally like steals those scenes, and she holds those scenes and brings them to be something where you want to watch. <laughs> Oh, in completely. the nicest way possible. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I, I know we have our laugh and we jokes with Jags, but it's not the actor; it's just the character. For me, there's just mm. no purpose for him, and I think that no. it would be the kindest way. It's like it's like it's like letting the dog go to the farm in the sky. I think it's the <laughs> kindest thing we could do to Jags is kind of just let him go, Ch- cash in his chip, C- cash in his chip, happy ending. Uh, but. I don't know about Habiba because I did. I like the character of Habiba. Mm. Again, I just don't see what because I, I she's think, had new headshots. So yeah, well, outside the soap. Oh yeah, I think that Habiba doesn't. I think if you get rid of Habiba, it means that it gives Ikra an opportunity to become a panasar. Do you know mm. what I mean? And so then instead of it, the, the, instead of it being separated, then Ikra can then become more intertwined with the Panasar story. And they've embedded Ash. her with Keegan and Tiff as well. So yeah. like, she's got more connections than what they've given Habiba, Habiba. and I, Jags. Again, again, they just kind of kept them in the sideline. And the fact that they've given Habiba and Jags a side story of their own too, mm. it's just for me, I just, I see, that I don't see their, their longevity on the show being You know what's going to happen? When, because Karat gave his poker chip Jax gave his poker chip to Kirat saying good luck or whatever yeah. the weird meaning was. He gave it to Chantel. Next week when we know what happens, happens. Jax is going to see that. Be like, that chip, it, she didn't cash it in quick enough. This is my opportunity to uh, go. And he'll mm-hmm. use that as a... Because he used to be friends with Chantel, didn't he? Jax. Oh, yeah. Well, Jax, yeah, because they were they friends at school. They kind of liked each other. Yeah, that's so right. So he might see that as a, like, a, okay, I, I'm going to take my opportunity and live a happy life. Get up and go. With or, Habiba. Or that chip is... Uh, Cursed. <laughs> yeah, it's cursed like a monkey paw. Mm. And that basically, if anyone holds that chip, they get cursed. I bet, I bet Chantel is holding the chip in her last scene. Oh, well, yeah. I'm not going to go into spoilers for next week because it's next week, but I bet like the last shot will be her holding it or something. Mm, or that, um, well, we need to talk about Grey and Chantel in a minute, yeah. but, 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 but Grey is holding the chip and that's what basically is the last, mm. the, the straw that broke the camel's mm, back. Maybe. Um, right, next up we've got Ben and Callum. Ballum! <laughs> Now, this was um, all sorts of... Um, Mess. Yeah. It reminds <laughs> me of two years ago when we had Hayley and Stuart introduced to the show. They got nothing to do with each other. But the way that the storyline of Hayley and Stuart just kept going round and round and round and we just kept seeing the same scenes over and over and over and yeah, over yeah. again for a whole year. And that's how I feel we are with Ben and Callum. Well, because don't forget, Hayley and Stuart were basically introduced by John York as a mm. bit of a stopgap. So really, yeah. all we had to do, all we wanted to do was just keep... Keep them going. Keep them going. And so, yeah. as you say, basically Monday it started the exact same way and it always ended on a cliffhanger on a Friday. Mm. And that seems to be what's happening with the Ballam story. It does, which is such a shame because like last, what was it? Just last August, maybe a bit before when it all started, it was such a good storyline. No, it was ju- ju- July. Was it July? Or, June, like, the wed- actually. Oh yeah, the wedding was August, wasn't it? But yeah. like that sort of time. And it was like, oh, this is... It was like the best storyline and it was really came out of nowhere and we were shook. We this were is shocked. June last year, we should say, not June this year. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Sorry, when the Ballam story began. And they were amazing. And now they just feel so like dull and like, ugh. Like, I'm watching their scenes and I can't even, I have to rewatch them sometimes because I've like, what's just happened again? Like the same but thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, that's it. It's just the same ugh. thing. It's just the same thing again and it again is. and again. Ben does something he shouldn't have done with Phil because he's trying to get Phil's Mm. uh, gratification. Callum knows but doesn't tell him but test Ben. Ben doesn't tell the truth. He says, oh, I'm sorry. Callum comes groveling back. Then Phil next week will say, right, got a job. Yeah. Ben's like, oh my God, I want to please you. Yes, please. (laughs) Let's do it. And it's like, oh, for God's sake. And round and round Mm. again. Because we've we've got Copper Callum. We can't obviously forget Copper Callum. Right. So, yes, let's discuss this. We did talk about this last (laughs) week on our um, our Roundup podcast. Our pre-show. But yes, he's now a policeman. (laughs) Yeah. So he's a policeman Mm -hmm. thrown through the ranks. His boss is the one who arrested Callum for attacking Leo, I think. Same guy. Remember that night? Yeah. Who, when he punched Leo? He didn't, know. he didn't arrest Leo. He's the police, he might have done that actually as well, but he's the detective who did the Keegan thing Keegan as well. Thing. Yeah. That was the Keegan thing. So, mm. but that, which, is, which is why I find it really strange that they've used him because I think we're meant to be on his side. I think we're meant to 
like him and support him. Really? He reminds me of Robbie Jackson. Yeah, he but talks like Robbie. He does Jackson. talk like Robbie Jackson. But besides the point, <laughs> um, it's the fact that like he's the last few times we've seen him on screen, he's not been a particularly very likable character. But now because he's Callum's boss, I think you meant to see him as a bit of a cheeky detective mm. type kind of role model for Callum to aspire to. <laughs> and I just find that really odd now that we're meant to suddenly change our opinion on him. Because mm. I, I don't think EastEnders has a history of not making you particularly like an authoritative police character. No. Or or, or the NHS. <laughs> the NHS bashing within the, the EastEnders is, is equal to that of a detective on EastEnders. Mm-hmm. There's only been one exception, which is the one who's Phil's arch nemesis. Oh, DSI Marsden. Yeah. yeah. And there was the other one who did the Bobby Bill investigation, the one who used to be on Footballers Wives really smoky voiced she was quite popular and there was like rumours oh, that, there I was rumours that her and Richie were like secretly in a relationship yes <laughs> yes oh gosh I can't remember her name but no, I know exactly but the, yeah, very there's, long there's, straight hair yeah her, like, like real faggy fagash breath <laughs> fagash lil <laughs> Um, so there's a few that are quite cool. It's a shame we haven't seen them like pop up. Mm. We're working around Wolford Station. I would have liked that. Yeah, rather than this Robbie Jackson wannabe. Yeah, if they were the boss of Callum, then I'd be I'd be more than happy with that. Mm. Callum likes a strong female. He does. He'd get on with them. Yeah. He'd go to the pub and have a cigarette with them, wouldn't he? <laughs> he he'd pretend to smoke just to fit in. He probably would. <laughs> Um, but yeah he's done like he's been put on a job where he has to look through the CCTV footage of the heist because they want to nab Danny Hardcastle Mm. which again I question like when we last saw Danny Hardcastle he was being arrested but they didn't have enough evidence there was loads of cronies around him they were shooting at a car (laughs) but not enough evidence police literally (laughs) caught them on the scene but not enough evidence for the role (sighs) so it's just stupid but they're also their CCTV setup is really quite CSI almost (laughs) abnormally complicatedly very good. Mm. I mean, if if you've but seen just CCTV... grainy enough that it might not be Ben Mitchell. Yeah, but then they're taking it to a special lab where they can enhance <laughs> the image. I mean, does that actually happen? No, no, you can't. That's, that's fiction, isn't it? Yes. That's that's. I know. Again, you need to, with both feet and and the hope in your heart, you need to suspend your belief with mm. EastEnders and Times, but. I mean, EastEnders also is built on realism, and I don't want them to start being like you have like this computer screen and goes, yeah, and it's like an one hundred percent X, you know, yeah, and it becomes this four K image. Sharon prints it off and puts it behind the bar. That's a lovely picture of Ben. I'm going to frame it next to Rowley. Um, yeah, it was all a bit like silly. And you say it's not realism, but EastEnders, it's meant to be known as the gritty realistic soap. Mm. So we have grounds to question this, and also wouldn't. Wouldn't he know that Callum's partner is Ben Mitchell by now? Again, this is a bone of contention. Mm. I mean, And he's like, who's that guy? And it's like, surely you know Ben Mitchell. Like, the Mitchells are quite known in the police. Ben Mitchell has a criminal record. Mm. Okay, his face has changed in time, but that Mm. doesn't matter. Who hasn't? Exactly. Peter. (laughs) Kathy. Bobby. (laughs) (laughs) But, I mean, yes, of course they would have linked it. And also Jack works with the detective. Mm. I'm sure Jack would have mentioned in passing, over a drink, just just over a general, not even thinking about it. Mm. Oh, yeah, Callum's partner Ben you know it would have been it would and have been mentioned. wasn't Callum having like a weird interview in the cafe and Ben came over and thought Callum was getting chatted up by the old guy and he kind of said that they were together and made a reference about going to a gym and that was a up practice interview wasn't it oh, was my it? memory serves me right okay. it was a practice interview for the police force I think it was an ex ex copper mm. who um was basically giving Callum some advice of how to pass the interview which he missed twice and mm. but, got but he's been fast tracked and he's in uniform now so yeah. maybe that's that's why they don't know about Ben because it's been fast tracked. They've not done any checks. Mm. Just give him the job. No CBS. He looks check. nice. He's quite sweet in the Callum. Got a nice hairstyle. We'll give him a job. <laughs> His uniform is very ill-fitting. Yeah, I know. I was expecting like real big sexy Callum. I did too. And it's like he still looks like little puppy dog Callum. But the still. shirt is huge. Like the sleeves are like you know the cartoon Doug. Like the the the, the sleeves of his shirt must be really big on his match to cars. Mm. That's what they were like. And his his protective vest, which by the way, does he need to wear a bulletproof protective vest whilst looking at CCTV footage? In Wolford, yes. What? So they're going to get raided yep. within the police service. It, it, for Give me, it time. Christmas. It, <laughs> it felt like that they couldn't. The costume department couldn't get a police uniform quick enough, so they just went to like some kind of novelty joke shop <laughs> and just found this uniform. And, and the shirt and picked up a script at the same time. Ew. Ooh. Oh. No, I don't mean dun, that. But dun, um, dun. the same stuff is happening. Callum like tested Ben to see if um, he'd lie to him. If he lied to him, he did. Yeah. And then he tested him again on the next episode 
because he was a bit moody and Ben wanted to ask him to move in with him. He put a key in a ring box. Even though they already lived together in the flat before lockdown, so they'd already moved in. Yeah, but he wants him to move in with him to the Mitchell, to the Mitchell <laughs> house. The Mitchell, the Mitchell <laughs> castle. They're like going round in circles, basically, and they've kind of made a plan because the CCTV is going to be enhanced. So it's only a matter of time before they know it's Ben. <laughs> just hearing that line just makes me cry. <laughs> and Callum said, no, Ben said he can't go back to prison. I'll have to run away. <laughs> oh yeah. Which because that's always the go-to solution. They put it? some guilt onto Callum. So he risks his job. But then Ben comes up with a bright idea. Yes. What if I can get evidence to that lag. implements, yeah, mm. that implements Danny, Danny as the, as committing the crime. He's doing what his mum did, Kathy, when she came back from the dead <laughs> to avoid prison sentencing. Kathy helped the police to get Gavin. So yes. I'm guessing that's what Ben's. I don't think Ben's helping the police. No, but he'll kind of he might like arrange a meeting with Danny and well, tell he... Callum, and then Callum <laughs> will come to arrest him. It'll be something like that, won't it? Yeah, basically. And then, then Ben will be let off. But then that doesn't erase the evidence of the season. CCTV footage, does it? No. The CCTV footage still stands. So how are they going to mm. walk around? Plus, that? Danny didn't actually take the money. Ben and Phil took the money, <laughs> which they still Where, have. What are they doing with this money because, now? Well, they were going to buy the Vic. Mm. I've got a funny feeling that this whole going back to Ian and Sharon's story because Ian isn't huge debt. Another you know debt mm. story, um, and he's barely being able to keep up the mortgages for all the businesses that he's got now. I've got a funny feeling that Phil's going to swoop in at some point and basically humiliate. Sharon and Ian and actually end up getting the Vic after all. Could have bought the Minute Mark, couldn't they, if it was quick enough? Yeah, why? Would you want the Minute Mark? <laughs> Sookie did. I want them to redesign the Minute Mark. I'd like Needs that an too. Update. Well, change the name as well. Yolandi didn't give it enough money. Well, it's an em- it, it, was a, it was a company. I'd be it was. Be, be, actually, that's a point. Is, is, is Minute Mark a franchise? Perhaps she's just bought the franchise, so it's still Minute Mark. Maybe. But I want them to change it to Sookie Stores. Sook Stores. <laughs> yeah, Super Sookie Stores. Super Sookie. <laughs> Come to Super Suki. Suki Supermarket. <laughs> Super Suki Supermarket. That'd be good. Love it. All right. Last storyline is the Chantal and Grey one. Because mm. over lockdown, she has decided that she's leaving Grey. She loves Kira. They've been doing little messages. She's been working with him. And she's decided. And I thought it was really clever. Like really a modern kind of twist how they had Grey find out that she was looking for divorce lawyers. Because mm. it came up as like a advert result on her internet. Yeah. And like that's a really. That's quite... I've not seen that on Soap before because that does happen. Like, you search for stuff or you talk about something. And then an advert pops And then an up. advert comes up on your internet saying, divorce lawyers. That's why you need to use incognito. Mm. Grey would have known that. Grey probably uses it. <laughs> yeah, he probably does. So that was quite clever. And again, knowing what's going to happen next week with Chantel, it's kind of um, automatically kind of elevated this storyline mm. where, because you know what's going to happen, it's um, you do pay attention and everything feels like it's important and everything feels like it's... It's like everything's foreshadowing next week basically like mm. like she went to go see Karen and Mitch and she kind of said oh I really love you you're really great parents and like she kind of said goodbye to them because she was planning to escape that day wasn't she yes and like everything feels um like 100% more horrible and dangerous because we know what's <laughs> yeah what's coming up I think you saying if it feels more horrible and dangerous is also being reflected by Gray's manner and his attitude and the way mm. he's been treating Chantel we've had a little complaint and a little jive at the show earlier when we kind of said that you know, three months since things have happened, but we've just been thrown back into the story. Mm. In this occasion... It's helped it. It's helped it mm. because I've actually felt like that you can see that the grey is at 11 now mm. and you've, you know, you've, you've not seen the build-up to that. And in a funny way, because you've not seen the build-up to it, it's actually made made what you can see Chantel's situation much more believable, that she's in a desperate situation mm. and she's seeing a solicitor trying to get a divorce. She needs to find some funds, get some money up. And I thought that the first ma- manipulative move, his, his bluff, if you want, that Grey presented to Chantel when he found out on the internet site about her looking for a divorce lawyer was that he threatened to divorce her first and he to said see what she said yeah and he said and you know if it had just been that then it probably would have been her saying okay then fine but he then said and I'm having the children mm. I'm keeping the children and Chantel knows that not only is it that she wants the children because she thinks she can take better care of them she probably can they're going to be in a really dangerous situation themselves because Chantel hasn't really gone to the police or anyone the only people who really know is Ash and the other nurse and now Karat that yeah, well, he doesn't know fully but he knows something he knows that yeah. something's going wrong and I think he can put two and two together and work it out mm. and so you know if Grey was to get the children they're going to be in harm's way in a big way because they're going to be his new target mm. for the abuse at the moment because she's there they're avoiding it Isn't plus it- there's the added fact that he's a lawyer so like she yeah. knows that if it does go to court mm. he's going to know every single thing to say or do to get what he wants and when she was 
asking her solicitor, she said, oh no, I want Grey to still have access to the kids. So she was mm. doing it like a nice divorce. Yeah, and which, she knew yeah. that he would do a nasty divorce. Mm. I mean, we know that Grey is the Heinz of lawyers. He's the 57 varieties. He can do anything you yeah. ask of him. He can do divorce. He can do murder charges. He can do anything you like. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, Chantel was in a really horrible Catch-22 situation where she's damned if she does and she's damned if she doesn't. And she, you know, you could see, again, beautifully portrayed by Jessica, Jessica, that she's she's confused. She's worried. She's panicking. She just mm. doesn't know what's the right thing to do. And people are kind of pulling her in all different directions. And I'm so glad that this story has finally found its root here. Mm. It's just such a shame it's taken them. 18 months to get to here yeah I know without the, the build up yeah. that it could have had because of lockdown obviously there's a few months worth of storyline where they were going to show us her and Kirit getting closer I guess yeah. and they would have maybe brought this poker chip thing into play like it kind of seems like everything's been shoved this week mm. um, which is a shame but at least it's gotten us to the next step mm. but it is typical like the last few weeks of a storyline the actors tend to up their game and the writing gets better it's like um it's not related at all but you know like louise mitchell's last few weeks suddenly tilly keeper was like really good yeah and louise was like a really good character <laughs> and then she left the kind of the same has happened with Chantel, mm. and it's like i've always quite liked Chantel, and we've always championed her as a character but she has really steps it up especially with the filming that they're gonna have to do yeah like that bathtub scene, which I mean, is obviously a thing that Grey has always done to Shanta. We've just never known well, about yeah, it. Well, yeah, to show that she's not lying. It's a really, such a power mm. trip, isn't it? To show that he, she's not lying to him and that she's completely being honest. She holds her breath in the bath mm, water. He punishes her. Do you think yeah. that's something his dad used to do? This is it. This is something, and I think perhaps... And that's another thing we haven't quite... That's right. We've not seen quite enough seen of enough of. We, we, that's, I wish, I just wish, when they had the therapy story mm. um, with this Chantel They Grey, did it a bit longer. They did it a bit longer. They let it ride out a bit more. It's, it was really strange to me when they made Chantel stop and she almost felt pity toward Grey, mm. which is fine, but then to really to we help need, him... We need it. She the needed, viewer needs it as well. And the viewer needed it for context. Mm. And I think it's... I mean, I don't know what they're going to do with the after aftermath to it and there's no. there's no reason really for them to immediately because from the impression we're getting it's going to be almost seen as an accidental mm, we're thing. not really sure we don't know for sure we don't know for certain 100 percent. but if it's done like that then there's scope then for gray's background to maybe flesh out a little bit mm. and, and and i think that'd be nice because then you could put everything that he did it's not please don't get me wrong what he did to Chantel was not right 100 percent not right but it would be nice to see why he became that yeah, way what happened to him it's mm. all that it always is so we know that his dad was abusive to his mum and maybe gray mm. and we know obviously it, it just stems down mm. um through generations that's how it always keeps going but you know we had scenes with Mia the daughter she said yeah. to her mum that she's good at keeping secrets don't worry and I kind of thought oh wait, do the kids know because mm. we've not really seen the kids insight and everyone knows it's quite known that domestic violence you think your kids don't know yeah. or whatever but they most likely do kids are switched on mm. they they spot things that you don't even know yeah. so um, I'm wondering maybe if maybe Mia is gonna speak up when it all comes out and that will be what they need to... Because mm. I don't want the thing... We're going a bit spoilery because it's next week because we know that Chantal's leaving. But I don't want it to turn into cover-up for, like, for like four months. I don't want this to become a sensationalist story. No. <laughs> this is this is our problem. It's like when Ben's death storyline, it mm. became a sensationalist story as soon as they did yeah. the heist. And now they're like, his hearing's back. <laughs> yeah, and it's forgotten. And it's like, and he can see, yeah. seemingly he can hear now. And it's like, okay. And the impact is basically lost. Mm. And they're, they're basically all for nothing. And but the Danny Hardcastle stuff's carrying on. <laughs> yeah. Which Where is... it should have been the other way around. Mm. Danny Hardcastle should have just been arrested. That would have been the end. And we now see Ben trying to cope with his new implant, mm. trying to hear. That's much more interesting, mm. but we're not getting it. But, but I'm hoping that they find their feet with Grey and the Chantel story. And mm. they obviously... Gray should get his, you know, get the repercussions attached to mm. the crime that he, the 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 many crimes he's committed, mm. but still spend time making him a rounded character. Yeah, not. I don't want to feel sorry for him no. necessarily, but I'm, but oh. he's ob- he's also been abused. Mm. What well, there's a, this is a reference that perhaps some people might not get. If you've ever watched uh, American Crime Story and the Versace story, right, and the guy who's the murderer mm. who killed all those people, it was so well written and so well acted and presented that you didn't only hate him, 
but you felt sorry you for him yeah. and you understood him and I, I've spoken to you before about this because we watched it together and I love it I absolutely loved it and I, I can't remember any other occasion in my recent life that where I've ever watched a TV programme and the, the character I've loathed so much but I've sympathised with him too mm. and I'm you not can saying understand where yeah, it stems from where it stems from and I'm not saying we should sympathise with Grey I'm not saying that no but we should but help us understand um, we should be able to see it from all angles and don't again please don't get me wrong there are some men out there who are just scum and, pe- and they would just do it because it makes them feel big and hard and great mm. and they are just scum but there but are why do they feel like that that's, the, but, but that's no, an there's interesting some people part who... as well but yeah it's interesting with for Grey some, but for Grey but for some men they're just scum and mm. they just do it because they like doing it and i think but, but i don't see gray as that character i think there's more there's there's a reason there's there's an interesting background story to him and i think i hope that the aftermath of this we'll mm. learn more of it from it yeah it, it would be important because they've never done this before mm. with an ending this this way round so actually yeah e- explore why Grey's like this mm. and where this like this this bathtub thing it's quite a specific unique yeah. thing so there must be some history behind it we hope but we'll well, we don't hope out. well we do hope but we, well, we, well, we hope we... we'll see it on screen yeah we'll know yeah. what's going on I mean but... I, I would be inclined and I'm sure you'll hate me for saying this but I would be inclined or happy to see a flashback episode baby grey not baby grey <laughs> you know what like I mean young grey teenage grey yeah. young grey that's very Hollyoaks though they did that recently with, it's really awful with a red door <laughs> if anyone who watches Hollyoaks knows a red door it's, <laughs> I don't know it's really tacky but it can um, be done yeah. well though yeah, and yeah, it can yeah. be done well but, it, but, it, but also it can be done with writing and there can mm. be done with a jaw the therapy section session when he's in prison no I, I don't I see I think I want it to be done with Grey admitting it to Whitney I think Whitney, yeah. Because Whitney would be the one who talks him down and perhaps he'll then turn himself in. Mm. Is there so many avenues they can take this with? But poor old Kira, he's finally found his his life. She's, he said, I'm always going to be here if you ever need me to say and I'll be here. And um, she had like, it was really sad because she had like a real glimmer of hope on her face, didn't she? Mm. At the end when she held that thing he gave her. And it's like, yeah, Grey's probably watching in the window right now. And well, they never showed that, which no, I but found you just, interesting. You can just, yeah. Because they showed Grey watching Corette and Chantel mm-hmm. when Chantel was just about to leave and she was desperately trying to get them out of the house and you just saw Grey st- st- um, sat in his car watching mm. them trying to leave the house. Mm. Um, right, that's the week rounded up, I think. It is. And do you know what it's time for? And I've missed doing it for so much. <laughs> and that's to read out your comments that you've been sending to us on our social media on I'm Not One to Gossip. And you know me, I ain't one to gossip. So as usual, we've asked you to get in touch with us on our social media, our Twitter at Wolford Weekly, our Instagram at Wolford Weekly or our Facebook group. Just search Wolford Weekly Podcast and click to join us. And you have. You've been getting in touch with us in your, I was going to say billions, but then I didn't want to <laughs> overestimate the... Don't uh, be silly. Yeah, Trillions. Just be, <laughs> of course. A little feature we started this week is a vote where we're going to give you two teams and we're going to ask you to vote which team side you're on. And hopefully it will be related to the week that's happened on the sofa as well. This Ooh. week, obviously, um, Ian Bill has been having a bit of a conflict with Dottie Cotton. Mm-hmm. So we asked you on our poll, are you a team Bill or are you a team Cotton? What oh, team I was are expecting you? a team Jags or Habiba. a team... <laughs> Habiba. <laughs> team Martin or Fire Extinguisher. Oh, yeah. But um, the, the, the one that's been presented, which, no, one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which team are you? Um, team Bill. Okay. I know he's slimy and horrible and just gross, but he didn't actually do anything wrong. And Dottie's being a bit silly here. Okay. Well, before I give the results... Here's a few comments. Oh, and by the way, um, our polls are on uh, Google Drive. So we ask you to comment on the poll as well. And if you haven't put your name on there, then I've just made up a name. So Della from Cool for Cuts has said, if Phil, Ben and Keanu didn't fight on the boat, then Denny would have survived. Ian even tried to rescue Denny. Yeah, well done, Della. Lovely. Shona from Facebook says, right now I'm with Dottie. Ian is so self and money obsessed. He deserves this. Dottie's Nick Cotton obsessed. (laughs) Yeah, I know. She's almost trying to become... She's trying to... Mm. Do, it's like she's doing it to, as an indoctrine and to, to become her father. Mm, but a moral version. <laughs> yeah. But like a weird one. Very loose morals. Yeah. Because she does it for money. 
At NC Robron fan on Twitter, I think someone's Ooh. an Emmerdale watcher as well, says Team Cotton, Sharon deserves to know what Slimeball Ian is. She knows. <laughs> we all know. <laughs> uh, Harry on Google, that is actually his real name, says I'm Team Ian, first time for everything, as all he did was lock Evil Denny in a room after he played a part in Bobby's near fatal Islamophobic attack. Exactly. As soon as the boat started to sink, Ian did try to save him. Mm-hmm. The ghost of Denny on Google says Denny <laughs> would have had a much stronger chance of surviving the boat crash if he hadn't been locked below deck. Ian is 100% responsible for that. You don't know that. Denny well, went down there anyway trying to find booze. He might have drunk loads of alcohol and hit his head next to Linda. Oh, well, got his foot stuck. Him and Linda might start drinking together. I just Mick, don't know. I've got Mick in a quandary. Who mm. do I blow air into a face of? Um, and Hannah on Facebook said, Team Nobody. Ian hasn't really killed Denny, so Dottie's vendetta is misplaced. So Team Bill, really? No, no, Team Nobody. There is no nobody. Let Hannah <laughs> have one or the one. other. No. Okay, so uh, the winner with 88.9% of the vote Ooh. is Team Bill. Oh, really? Yep. That's surprising. Good, I'm glad. The viewers are intelligent who are still watching yep, EastEnders. Yep, and so are our listeners. Uh, 11.1% obviously then went with Team Cotton. Thank Good. you to over 200 of you who responded to that. And thank you to everyone... Thought there was a billion. <laughs> Sorry, at the Close. billion. 200 billion. There's only a few in that. Yeah, 1 billion and 200. And now some general comments that people have been getting in touch with us about as well. First of all, obviously, probably the biggest topic of the week was Chantel and Grey. Jess on Facebook says, Chantel realising Corit's love for her, but knowing she isn't going to get to cash in that chip is just devastating and absolutely heartbreaking. I blame Jags. I know, he should have given the chip earlier. Yeah, this chip... Where did it come from? It's all Jags' fault. Did they used to own a casino? Does Jags have a gambling problem we don't know about? Who knows? Sukisino. (laughs) At Letitia V says, I was shocked to see Chantel's fear of losing her children and the way Grey manipulates her knowing that she wants a divorce. Her minutes underwater were unbearable. Hmm. That was a really hard scene to watch, I must say. I'm assuming, spoiler alert for next week, so just fast forward 30 seconds. Say it then. I'm assuming that that is how he she's going to die in the bar. Yes, because you you That's tweeted and put on Instagram that uh, they they referenced a photo of the first Vic owners and that the woman had died by being drowned oh, yeah, in the I bath. I did that. Yeah, so is that like a weird reference? Because they referenced that in February, so they probably would have. So known we thought it was going to be a boat reference to Linda, mm. but perhaps it was a reference to Chantel. Very foreshadowing. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, that's what I think is going to happen. Yeah, I think... I don't know. I think you might be right. There's a weird quote where she says Chantel's going to be more Taylor and find her inner strength still. And John Sen have said that viewers will still be inspired by her her the strength that she shows even at the end so like i don't know like the, it's that an interesting it, quote isn't it mm, that makes it sound like that she she kills herself yeah, almost or, that she yeah. does it to save someone or mm. her child or just stays underwater like i don't know there's something mm. weird i don't know it's an interesting quote that is though that's very there's, there's a lot to think about that quote. you can you can dissect it a lot and there's mm. a lot to think into it let us know get in touch with us on twitter instagram what you think of that quote what was the quote again oh, she'll, you'll see her inner strength even in her final moments you'll be rooting for her okay it's John's same like quote that. yeah let us know people have been talking about the filming uh, Rob on Facebook said I was expecting these episodes to be arty to get around the social distancing but it's mostly looked pretty natural yeah it's been very impressive and Hugh on Facebook says was anyone else playing spot the perspex I only spotted it once twice once on Ian's crotch which I don't normally crotch look. yes when him and Dottie were outside near the wall you could see the reflectiveness like on his why trousers why are you staring at his I crotch I wasn't I was trying to find the perspex <laughs> well, you sound and, like you were trying to find something the, else <laughs> call me Sharon Bill's beans <laughs> rub my feet um, and then the second time was when Bobby and Dottie were talking you could see the the wire frame of it for some reason but they made it look like a lamppost but it wasn't it was very odd Okay. But it, it, you can't be nitpicky because they're doing better than everyone else. So oh, there. Uh, again, at A343 says that um, it's a lot less clunky than the ITV soaps. And within a few episodes, I wasn't even thinking about it at all. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, Adeline um, on our Google poll said 20 minutes just isn't long enough. I am impressed with the techniques they're using, even if they are wasting them with Jags and Habibas. <laughs> mopey teen rom-com of a relationship oh yes and she says uh, welcome to scotland oh thanks to a fellow scot we are you thanks. can tell my my accent <laughs> is slowly changing and i thought i've we'd not it... noticed the um shorter episodes really like, i haven't not massively no I'm not really it's if, only if, a few minutes really isn't it? i found them to be really punchy i've mm. I quite enjoyed them and final comment anyway on twitter at b dash Sorry if I said that wrong. It says, what a great comeback. Can't wait for the months leading up to Christmas. I know they're filming Christmas now. They released an image today or like a newspaper took an aerial shot and all the lights are up and the Christmas trees are up. So They're getting in early, aren't they? Because I think they're afraid case, of a second yeah. lockdown. Yeah. 
Thank you, as always, for your comments. If you have anything to say to us, just go on our Twitter, our Instagram or our Facebook group. Just search Wolford Weekly Podcast. And if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, please give us a review. Everything helps. And if you're listening to us on YouTube, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And comment as well. Why not? Comment on that as well. It's all fun. Thank you for joining us. It's great to be back. It is. We'll be back next week because we've got... There's a special episode next Friday, 30 minutes long. There'll be loads to talk about next week, I'm sure. So, yeah, exciting. See you then. Bye.